everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today, we are going to make the churn dash block. We are actually going to be making these during the live stream this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. I like to put up the tutorial on how to make the block in the morning. The live streams aren't for everyone. It is a bit of a long video. It's usually about an hour and a half or two hours, and it tends to be a little bit, a little bit disruptive because I do stop and talk to people in the comments, in the chat, and we have little conversations. I answer questions, and I also make the blocks. So this way you have a clean cut tutorial with less chitter chatter, not no chitter chatter, because if you've been to my channel before, then you know I like to give you a little bit of tidbits and conversations. And if you're new, hopefully you will find something that you enjoyed in this video. And maybe you learned a little tip or trick on making the churn dash. Now today we are just doing them in two fabrics, as you can see, two fabrics, two color, however you want to look at it. This afternoon on the live stream, I'm going to show you how to make the individual pieces. Today we are going to do the technique where you sew two squares together and you get four half square triangles, whether it be for the 12 and a half or the six and a half inch block. I have a couple charts for you that are listed down below in the description box. And if you're looking for another video to watch, check the pinned comment, because lately I've been adding a video to the pinned comment, whether it pertains to the video that you're seeing right now or just something I think that you guys might enjoy watching. This afternoon during the live stream, we're going to make a scrappy version of this. But during this morning's video, I wanted to show you a way that you can do this only using two fabrics. I found two separate places where there were charts available to give different sizes of the blocks, anywhere from a three inch block to a 12, or I should say a three and a half inch to a 12 and a half inch, however you wanna look at it. Remember, we are doing six and a half inch blocks and 12 and a half inch blocks during our year long process of finding our perfect quarter inch. And that sounded a little scary that it might take us a year, but I have highest confidence in you guys that within just a couple blocks, anyone who is a little bit short on your quarter inch seam is going to zone in on that and have gorgeous blocks. Now, since we're just using two colors, we can do a couple things that create like a shortcut and make it a little bit quicker. So if you were making a whole bunch of blocks and each block was a background of, let's say, white like mine, and then you were using various rainbow colors, you'll be able to make these in a quicker fashion and you can go ahead and chain piece a bunch of them, get yourself all set up. When we work on it this afternoon, I'm going to choose different colors all the way through and just have one steady background. And even for your background, you can go ahead and make that scrappy. I have one white fabric, but if you wanted to, you can use several different white fabrics. We're gonna work on our 12 and a half inch block. I have things set up already for us. Now, if we look at our block, we can see that it is once again set up in that nine patch look. So we have four half square triangles. We have our center block, and then each of these sections are two rectangles. You have to remember that this is still has our seam allowances, so there's an extra quarter inch all the way around. So that makes this look a little bit larger than this piece. But after you stitch it in and we lose that quarter inch, you'll see that they all look the same. We're going to start with our half square triangles. This is one of my favorite ways of doing half square triangles. And by doing it this way, we're going to get four identical ones and we're only going to have to shave off just a little bit in the trimming process. And sometimes if things are just working out just right, you won't have to trim anything at all. So while following my charts, I know that to get four half, four half square triangles out of my fabric, I need to cut this at seven and a quarter inch square. I saw this trick on Missouri Star Quilt Company several years ago. Sometimes I can find the chart and sometimes I can't. It's not really in a way that it's easy to find. If I find it again, I'll put it down below. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a quarter inch around the entire square. And then we're gonna cut it in an X pattern and that'll open up and give us our half square triangles. It will give us bias edges. Just remember that I learned the hard way that you need to starch it before you cut it and not after because it will change your size. So before you cut your seven and a quarter inch squares, go ahead and give that a good starch if you're using fat quarters or just a large piece of scrap and then cut it into two seven and a quarter inch squares. I have my novelty print, which is my fun fabric and my background fabric, and they are both right sides together. 
double check my white because it's a white on white print. Yes, I got it right. So you can see they're both right sides together. I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine. Quarter inch seam allowance, 2.0 stitch length all the way around it. If you'd like, you can go ahead and use a smaller stitch length, a 1.8. Some people prefer to go up to a two and a quarter. Whatever you're used to using and whatever works for you and your machine and that you're comfortable with, go ahead and use that. So before I take that over to sew, I wanna go ahead and sew the next piece at the same time. So we're gonna work on these little bars here. And the easiest way to do it with a two color block is to make strips. So we'll do a little strip piecing. For my 12 and a half inch block, my charts tell me that I need to have a two and a half inch strip so that when we sew it together, it equals that center square. You can do all the math and figure out how many you need to get four, but they already tell us to cut it at 20 inches long. One chart says to cut it 19 inches long. One chart says to cut it 20 inches long. I'm cutting mine 20 just to have that little extra and we'll see how much is left at the end and then you'll know which way you wanna go. If you're going for a total zero waist, then you can go ahead and cut yours a little shorter. Right side together, quarter inch seam just down the long length of it on one side. So let me take these over and I'll sew them up and I will give them a nice little press and then I'll show you what they look like. I went ahead and pressed my strip to the dark side, so away from my background fabric, because that happens to be white, but if you're doing a dark background, then you'll be pressing yours towards whatever side's the darkest. One of our checkpoints here is on this 12 and a half inch block, we know that our center square right there is four and a half inches. So these pieces, our little bars, they need to be four and a half inches. So before I go any further, I can just lay my ruler down and I can check and I am right at four and a half inches. So if this block goes wonky and crazy, it's going to be after this point. I stitched all the way around, all four sides. You can put pins in it if you want. I didn't use any pins on the small block, but I did pin the four edges on this block. Totally up to you and your comfort level. At this point, I want to start treating, well, I always want to treat my fabric with respect, but I'm going to be very gentle with it at this point. I'm going to cut diagonally one way and then diagonally the other. If I line up my block so I don't have to move it, so I can cut one way and the other way, I'll start with this one and I'm going to go corner to corner. When I did the same process with the smaller block, I had very little bit of wiggle room to trim it up. So you just want to be careful and make sure you're getting as close as you possibly can to the corner. You really don't want to have a wonky cut. And then without touching the fabric, I'm going to gently lift this up. I'm going to lay it down here, corner to corner, and I'll cut across that. I already gave it a nice press on all of my seams to set my seams down so that my thread is going ahead and connect really well and settle down. But now I have my four half square triangles. I'm going to press them again to the dark side. So I'll take them over to my iron and I will open it up. Give it a gentle finger press just to let it know, hey, this is where I want you to go. And I'm gonna be careful not to do any weird twisting with my hands or with the iron. I really wanna do a good job at pressing here and I don't wanna do any type of my normal ironing and scrubbing that I like to do. And that's gonna hopefully keep my squares looking nice. See, I have four of them. Let me go ahead and take them over and get them all pressed and looking good. There they are all pressed open and nice and pretty. Remember our goal is to match the center block. So these also need to be four and a half inches. I'm gonna line it up down here in the corner just to see what my size is. And I can see that I have a little bit to trim away. Now I can trim just a smidge off of either side or I can just check and see if I have a corner where I bring the the, see the little diagonal line that we have up oh, there is, see the little diagonal line that comes on these rulers. If I line that up right on my little seam here and I put my corner mark at my block size, which is four and a half inches. And if I can look and I can see that it lines up exactly on here and here, 
and I still have that perfect diagonal, then I can just go ahead and trim that off. I'm gonna put a link down below to the video on how I trim up half square triangles. That has a lot more information in it for you, and I don't really wanna clog this video up with that. If you need a little bit of help, you can check that video out. Normally I would trim two, I would trim this side and then the other side, so four sides, but I call it two sides, you know, because you flip it. So I think that little bit is just perfect. It's just enough for us to trim it up, but not so much that we made our blocks too big and not so little that our blocks won't come out right. So I'll just go ahead and trim these other ones up. So these guys are all trimmed up and I want my novelty or my fancy fabric to point towards the center. You can see they are just pressed to the dark side there. You can press them open, of course, if you that's what you prefer. I have the white block that goes in the center. These mats are really great, except when you're working with white and trying to do a video, it's hard to see it. So the next thing we have up is we have to cut our bars that are gonna go in there. Now we know that these are four and a half inches wide because we double checked. I'm just going to trim a fresh edge off of the end just so that I know that it's nice and squared up. Now this strip size is going to be based on the size block you're doing. Remember we're doing a 12 and a half inch block. This would measure two and a half inches if you were doing the six and a half inch block or another measurement depending on the block you're doing. You can actually blow this up and make it 24 inches or all the way up into 36 inches and just make one big center of a baby quilt block. So each of my pieces are now going to be cut at four and a half inches. I don't feel the need to put it directly on there so that my ruler is lined up exactly at four and a half inches. I like to slide down a little bit past all of these extra lines to where I can see a nice, fresh, clean line. Somewhere usually around three and a half inches is usually my favorite. I find my four and a half inch on this side and I put that three and a half inch line right on my seam so that I know I'm not kind of crooked in any way. And that just allows me to make sure everything is lined up nicely and hopefully I get a perfect square. Now we need four of them. One, two, three, and four. Normally I would just work my way down, but I do have the tripod right here. So I just slide it down. Some people like to use the lines on their mat instead, and some people work right to left and others work left to right. So whichever way works for you, as long as you end up with a four and a half inch square, you are doing a great job. So you see going with 20 inches, we now have a piece that is about just shy of two inches because I did clean it up a little bit. So after you make one, if you're gonna be making an entire quilt, make your one test block and see how much you have left over. So if you wanna go ahead and make a little bit less, I would recommend having um, probably about an inch longer than you need it to be though. That way you can go ahead and square it up at both ends and you know the pieces in the center are gonna be perfect squares. If we bring our pieces in like this, we can see what our square is, Our see what our block is going to look like. All our little happy froggies. Now as we, oh, I really like the way that looks. Now we're just gonna sew it together like we would a nine patch. So whatever your preference is, I like to take the center strips and fold them all over to the left. And then I'll go ahead and chain piece these, press them, and then stitch on the last piece and then I will sew them into rows. Let me stitch this up and I'll show you what they look like. There are my first two columns stitched together. And what I did is I decided that I'm going to press my seams towards my bars 
because of this area right here, you have a lot extra if you're going to push that over that way to put that seam allowance and you might get a little bit of a lump there. So for the best of my ability, until I come across a situation where I might have to do it the opposite way, I'm going to do that. That also keeps me from having to press it into my white areas and create any kind of a shadow because this is pretty dark fabric. So again, I pressed it to there. And hopefully as I do it, since I did it to the right, to the left, to the right, I'll still be able to nest my seams. So I just take my last row and add it onto it. And that'll give me my three rows done. I got myself confused for a minute. I have columns when actually I sewed rows. There we go, that's better. So I have my one, two, and three row. So now I'm going to stitch the top to the second, press my seam. I'm gonna press them back up again to this bar here so that it covers all the green and it keeps me from shadowing on the white. And I'll sew the bottom to those two that'll be connected and I will press that down to this part. And that should give me my entire 12 and a half inch block. And if I did everything correctly, it'll all be at a 12 and a half inches. Let's finish it up. And there it is, my 12 and a half inch churn dash, my six and a half inch churn dash. One last thing to do, I already cheated and peeked because I wanted to see what it looked like. Remember, it was just a couple of blocks ago where I was struggling with my perfect block. I could not get it to 12 and a half inches. I'd have like a little bit of a, uh, like a little crescent moon cut out of it on one side and on the other, and then I'd have two perfect ones. I found out for me that my problem is when I'm cutting my fabric. So I put this down here and I look and everything is perfect except for this one little spot and I'll show you. I didn't catch this when I was sewing, but you see how I have just this little bit sticking out? This actually just needs to be trimmed. Now my problem with that is I'd already taken apart one seam somewhere. Let's see which seam I worked on. Oh, I'd actually taken apart this seam once because it, it, it didn't work out just right there because this is my tail, so I know that's where I did it. So I didn't get it quite perfect, but is if I were to trim just this little bit from here to here, this little dip is about all, and it's really only like an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna consider that block to be perfect because when I lay my next block down on here, I will just follow along on that, and that little bit of uh, thing will be gone. I could take it back again, but I have a rule where I will only take a block back twice and that's for an important block that a customer has paid for the finished item or I'm hoping to put it in my shop and I need it to be perfect. But for this block, for me, I will use this in some other project, but that little bit of a squirt there. And I'm only showing you that and telling you that because we are working towards getting our perfect quarter inch and our perfect 12 and a half inch and six and a half inch blocks. My six and a half inch block is is really straight on. So that guy looks really good. But I just love this block because I love the little bit of an angles here. I love how it pops up. Now, if you want, you can change so many things with this based on just changing your fabric. You could take all of your pieces and spin them in different directions if you'd like. You could put a fun embroidery or other type of print of fabric in the center. As I said, you can reverse this and have your background be dark and have this be light. I've done this in pastels. I've done it in black and whites, all in solid colors. And no matter what I use, it just looks awesome. So I hope to see you this afternoon where we are going to be making these blocks in the six and a half and 12 and a half inch size, but we are going to make every little piece on here a different fabric same color different color i don't know i haven't cut them out yet but if even if you just wanted to have a red block you can use a different red fabric all the way around or make it a rainbow and use all kinds of scrappiness it's totally up to you so i hope you can join us this afternoon at 3 p.m eastern and make some blocks with us or just hang out and chat in the chat box and just enjoy the company of other people that enjoy what you enjoy so your code word for today will be frog because these guys, as a one piece of fabric to use it in a bag or something, I just wasn't quite sure about it, but I think cut up like this, this is the perfect little block for these little froggies. Don't forget my live streams will replay the comments show up after about 24 hours or so. YouTube just takes a little bit to process it all to get those comments there. 
I do not delete my live streams so they will always be available for you. I know it's not always a convenient time for everybody and I like to watch them on the replay myself too versus always watching live. So either I'll see you this afternoon or I'll see you next time. Bye.